ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a burglary detail. During the last two weeks, there have been a series of burglaries in the Valley Division. You haven't got a lead. Your job, find one. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Wednesday, September 9th. It was hot in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of burglary division. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Bernard. My name's Friday. We're on our way out to a recently completed housing project in the valley. It was 10, 13 a.m. when we got to the corner of Moore Park and Victory. Mayflower Homes. This one right here, huh? Yeah, 224. I guess they haven't sold them all yet. Mm-hmm. 500 bucks down, not so bad. Pretty nice houses. You thinking of getting a new place? Oh, I'm thinking. Kids are shooting up. We could use a little more room. Mm-hmm. Just what Faye always wanted. House nobody else has lived in. Well, someday, maybe. Yeah. Yes, sir? We're police officers. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Oh, how do you do? Hi. Somebody reported a burglary at this address. Are you Sam Brighton? Uh, yes, sir. That's me. Mm-hmm. Would you show us where he broke in, please? Oh, yes, sir. It's in the front bedroom. J- just this right here. That's it, yeah. Just off the hall here. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, this window here, you can see where he jimmied it. Yeah. I was careful not to touch it. You know, fingerprints. That's good. Can you give us a list of the things he took? No, sir, not for certain. We were just getting moved in, and we don't know for sure what's gone. A couple of silver trays and a pair of candlesticks, they're missing. Any cash? Oh, about $20, $25. When I changed to go out to dinner last night, I left it in my trousers. They were in the other bedroom on the back of a chair. Pretty dumb place to leave money. Mm. Your family live here with you? My wife. I see. We've only been married a couple of weeks. Things he stole, they were wedding presents. That's too bad. Sure is a heck of a way to start out. Being married, I mean. Never wanted a house in the first place. Well, it's their own fault. What do you mean, sir? Sally's parents insisted on giving it to us, the down payment part. Uh Uh-huh. Sally will never be able to manage a big place like this. She's just a couple of years younger than I am. Just a kid. Apartment's what we ought to have. No point in arguing with in-laws, though. I found that out pronto. Yeah. Any idea what time the burglary took place? Yes, sir. Between 6 and 10 last night. Must have been then, between 6 and 10. Mm Mm-hmm. We went over to Sally's folks for dinner. Our refrigerator hasn't been delivered yet. I see. The reason I'm so sure about the time is I wanted to find out how long it would take to drive there. Mm-hmm. I told Sally it wouldn't be more than 15 minutes. First time she's ever been away from home, she kind of likes to feel that her folks are handy. I understand. Hollywood Hills, that's where they live, off of Mulholland. Took us 14 minutes. Left here 6 o'clock exactly. News was just coming on the radio. Got there 6.14. I'm not so sure when we got home, but it was right around 10 o'clock. Mm-hmm. That's close enough. Of course, I didn't know about the burglary then, when we got home. We just went straight to bed. Didn't come in here. We used the back bedroom. Yeah. It wasn't until this morning when I started looking in my pants for cash. Mm-hmm. Is it possible he broke in while you were asleep? Well, I might have slept through it, but not Sally. The least little thing wakes her up. She'd have heard him. Must have happened while we were out. Have you noticed anybody suspicious hanging around the last couple of days? No, sir. Of course, we're brand new in the neighborhood. Most of the houses aren't even sold yet. We wouldn't know who was suspicious and who wasn't. Be all right if we talk to your wife? Oh, she couldn't tell you anything I haven't. She here now? Over to mother's. This kind of thing, well, it kind of threw her, you know. You know how it is, just a kid. Yeah, we understand. Wish it had been me that found out about the bird. The bird? Well, didn't I tell you? I meant to. No. Darndest thing. Parakeet. Somebody gave it to Sally when she was a girl. Taught it how to talk. Talk real good, too. Why should a burglar do a thing like that? What did he do, turn it loose? No, sir, he killed it. We talked to Mrs. Brighton at her parents' home. She was unable to add anything to what her husband had told us. 1.15 p.m. The crime lab reported that there were no useful fingerprints on the Brighton window. Pictures were taken of the Jimmy marks. There was no other physical evidence. September 11th, two more burglaries took place in a new housing tract near Sepulveda Boulevard. The burglar had followed the same M.O. used on the Brighton house. One victim also told us that three pet canaries had been killed. The other victim had no pets. 
By the end of the following week, four more burglaries had occurred in new housing developments. In each case where the home contained pet birds, the bird was killed. Other pets were not disturbed. Circulars describing the stolen articles were sent to all pawn shops in the city. September 21st, 8.05 a.m., we checked in for work. Oh, man. What's the matter? You still asleep? Yeah, I didn't get a wink last night. They was at me all night. Oh? No. It's my own fault, Joe. Never should have told her about all those new houses going up nowadays. It was a big mistake. Well, I thought you told me you were considering a new house. Yeah, I changed my mind. We got enough people staying with us as it is. Faye's relatives. Brother-in-law Armin, you know. Oh, him, huh? Yeah, he's down here. As long as he has to sleep on the living room couch, he'll take off after a day or two. Uh Uh-huh. Give him a real bed and he'd stay with us for the rest of his life. I get it. Burglary, Freddy. Yes, sir, when did it happen? I see. Just a minute, please. All right, go ahead. That's 214 South. Yes, sir, I've got it. Right. Well, we got another one. Yeah? Pet shop over near Lancashire Boulevard. The shop? Uh Uh-huh. That doesn't sound like our boy. Might be if they sell birds. We left the office and drove out to the Biggs Pet Shop on a side street in North Hollywood. 9.07 a.m., we interviewed Jasper Biggs, the owner of the store. He told us that during the night, the back door had been forced open. $17 was missing from the cash register. Money ain't important, you understand. Not that anybody likes being robbed. Yes, sir, we understand. Besides, it's happened before. That's why I keep this sign up here on the register. It tells them how to open it. I see. A couple of years ago, a fellow broke in and wrecked the machine trying to get it open. That cash register's worth a whole lot more than anything I keep in it. Shut up over there, all of you! Dang much racket in here, a person can't even think. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah, about the money. Now, like I said, it don't matter, the $17. Yes, sir. Birds is different. They do matter. Sir? Well, he killed all of them, every last one. I see. Parakeets, canaries, parrots. Mm-hmm. Parakeets and canaries, now, they don't matter. I can replace them. Insurance will take care of it anyway. Them parrots is another story. It's a different story entirely. Yes, sir. Two of them was on consignment, worth over $100 apiece. $100. Bet you never figured birds were on that high, did you? No, sir. Well, they do. Parrots, anyway, some of them. And what's more, my insurance don't cover birds on consignment. How do you like that? Huh? Check with the fellow who sold me the policy right after I called the police. It says birds on consignment aren't covered. Loophole, that's what it is, loophole. Yes, sir. Probably somebody wanting to buy them parrots. Be just my luck. Big pet shop. Who? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, they're still here. Uh, just a minute. It's for you. Thank you. This Friday. Yeah. Okay, give me that address. All right, I got it. As soon as we can. Right. We got another one? Tracked off Riverside Drive. Same routine. One thing's different. Yeah. Some lady saw him. We ended our interview with Mr. Biggs, and we drove out to the address of a Mrs. Nellie Diver, who had just reported a burglary. Mrs. Diver told us her house had been entered shortly after she left to do her marketing. She discovered she'd forgotten her grocery list, and she came back for it. When she returned, the burglar was in the dining room. He had entered through a side window. The M.O. appeared to be the same as in the other recent burglaries. Never saw such a surprised look on a man's face in my life. He just stood there like he was frozen solid for a minute or more. And then he let out through the back door like it split. Uh-huh. How long were you gone from the house, ma'am? Five, ten minutes. As soon as I remembered about my list, I started back. I don't know why I'm getting so forgetful. Old age must be catching up with me. Well, it's a good thing he did forget, Mrs. Diver. Hmm? Oh, you mean so he didn't get time to steal anything? Yes, ma'am. Nothing around here worth stealing. I wonder how he happened to pick me. It'd be different if I lived up in Bel Air or one of those estates. Well, if it's who we think it is, he's satisfied with smaller homes. Does it mean he's pulled this kind of stunt before? Yes, ma'am. You don't say. Do you think you'd recognize the man if you saw him again? I beg your pardon? The man who broke in here. You said you got a good look at him. Oh, real good. Stood there in the dining room for a full minute, maybe more. Then you'd recognize him, would you? I don't see why not. This isn't the first time we met up, you understand. How's that? I saw him once before. Well, when was that? Last week sometime. I'm not certain. Wednesday or Thursday, middle of the week, in through there. You sure it was the same man? He looked the same. Came right up to my door. Well, what do you want? I'm not certain of that either. I've been racking my brain trying to remember... So many fellas around here last week, two or three milkmen trying to sign me up, a couple of people wanting me to take newspapers, three or four asking about dry cleaning, somebody selling rugs. Spent half my time running to the door. 
So help me, I can't remember which one he was. Getting old, sure is fate. You think he was just pretending to be a door-to-door salesman of some kind or other? Seems to me they were all trying to sell something. It's what always happens when you settle in a new location. Yes, ma'am. What if you'd mind coming downtown with us for a little while? No, no, I wouldn't mind. What for? We'd like to show you some photographs. See if you can pick the man out for us. Right now? If you could, yes. Well, you just give me a minute to get my hat and change Henry's water. Henry? My canary out in the kitchen. Oh. Haven't you noticed the way he's been... Oh, that's funny. Ma'am? He's usually singing up a blue streak this time of day. We went into the kitchen with Mrs. Diver and we found the dead bird. She agreed to accompany us downtown. 11.05 a.m. We pulled the mug shots of burglars who matched the description that she'd given us and we showed them to Mrs. Diver. She identified one of the photographs, Stanley A. Bushing. Bushing had done time in the state penitentiary as a cat burglar. From his five tens, we learned his acquaintances and the places he was known to frequent. 3.36 p.m., we located Bushing in a bar on North Main. Stan Bushing? Yeah? Police officers. You don't say. I want to talk to you, Bushing. Be my guest. Come on, let's go. What's the matter with it right here? A joint don't get noisy until later on. Why not right here? Where were you last night? What time? All night. And this morning. Eight o'clock this morning. Why do you want to know? All right, come on, let's go. Well, give me a chance to finish my beer, will you? <laughs> Look, you boys want to know where I was last night? All right, I'll tell you. I just want to know why, that's all. You been up the valley lately? Well, come on, how about it? Oh, uh, that's why you're after me, huh? You think I've been pulling those house crawls? What do you know about them? Well, I read in the papers. You know more than that. I do? There was another one this morning. That's news to me. Is that so? Yeah, I haven't bought a paper yet today. The lady saw you. Huh? Right after you broke in. Me, huh? She says it's you. Well, she needs glasses. Well, we don't think so. Look, you'll never make it stick. We're gonna try, fella. I'm clean. Not even on parole no more. It won't be parole this time. It won't be anything. Oh, come on, Bush, and quit stalling. Look, don't get yourself in an uproar. Take it easy. You'll live longer. Suppose I got an alibi. Well, we'll try it for size. For all night and this morning. Go on. I was with friends. We got a lady who says different. I got a lot of friends. Yeah, huh? we know your friends. We'll settle for the lady. 10.30 last night till 9 o'clock this morning with him every minute. Where? You ain't going to like it. Where were you? You're going to look pretty foolish. Come on, let's have it, Bushy. Drunk tank, Lincoln Heights Jail. We verified Bushing's alibi with the booking sergeant of Lincoln Heights, and we learned that he was in the clear as far as the previous night was concerned. 5.06 p.m. We interviewed Mrs. Diver again. She wavered in her identification of Bushing's photo, and she said she couldn't tell us anything more. Teletypes of the suspect's description were set out. The next day, Tuesday, September 22nd, we had a meeting with a skipper, Captain Bernard. Well, where do we stand? Just about where we did when it started. It's not good, is it? No, it's not. We thought we had him yesterday, skipper, but it didn't pan out. You got a description? Well, if she's no better at describing him than she is at identification, it doesn't mean much. We figure he pretends to be a salesman of some kind. Is that how he cases the houses? As far as we can tell, yeah. You need a lot more than that. Yep. This guy's got to be stopped. It isn't just the burglaries. Seems half of the people in L.A. keep pet birds. I don't know. My kids have a couple of canaries themselves. Mm. You get attached to them like you do anything else. Yeah, I know. You boys seen the mail on this thing? No, sir. Letters from all over, not just in town here, all over. People are raising cane. My own kids asking me when we're going to catch them. Can't wait any longer for a break. We've got to make one. Well, you got any ideas? I don't know. We've just been working housing projects, huh? Except for that one pet store, yeah. Well, let's forget the store and see if we can get a pattern out of the houses. Well, they're all new places. Folks have just moved in. He cracks one or two in each development, and then he moves on. So far, he stayed in the Valley Division out there. The way they're building up out that way, he won't run out of targets, though. They opened any new projects last week or so? Yeah, a couple. He tapped them yet? No. We alerted the owners, told them to warn anybody who moves in. Probably won't do much good, though. Might. Hmm? If you two moved in. Wednesday, September 23rd. We drove out to a new track just off Coldwater Canyon Boulevard. It was called White Manor Homes. We found the tract office near the main entrance, and we went inside. Gentlemen, what can I do for you? Are you interested in owning a new home? We're police officers, sir. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Police? That's right, sir. Well, I don't think I've had any parking tickets lately. We're from burglary. Oh, about the bird man, I suppose. Okay. Yeah, that's what they call him in the papers, you know, the bird man. Yes, sir, it's about him. He hasn't been around here. Well, no, sir, not as far as we know. Well, that's a relief. Not that it makes much difference. You're in charge of this project, are you, sir? Yes, sir. My name's Simple, Horace Simple. I've got a card right here on the desk. That's all right, Mr. Simple. I own White Manor Home. I see. Uh, I guess I should say me and the bank. We own it together. <laughs> yes, sir. It's all going to belong to the bank, though, the way things are going. 
Been open nearly a week now. I haven't sold a single house. Haven't even had a decent offer. Oh, what's the trouble, sir? Now, you know what's the trouble just as well as I do. Birdman, that's the trouble. Uh, Folks just aren't going to move into any new developments until he's caught. Sent me a circular last week, the police department. I'm supposed to warn anybody who buys from me. Put them on their guard. Yes, sir. Don't need any warning. As scared off as it is. Three months ago, I'd be half sold out by now. Seems to me you fellows are dogging it. Now, I'm not telling you your business, mind you, but it seems to me you should have picked him up before this. Yes, sir. Maybe you can help us. How's that? Well, the sign out in front says that two of your houses are furnished. Is that right? Oh, that's just for display. Wesley's department store did it. Figures it's good advertising. Yes, sir. Of course, I don't sell them furnished, just for display. We'd like to use one of them for a few days. Use one? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm, af- I'm afraid I don't follow you. Well, sir, you've got a sold sign that you can put up in the front yard, haven't you? Well, I guess so. Well, we'll see that nothing's disturbed. If anybody asks, you tell them that a new couple moved in. Oh, I get you. Decoys, huh? Yes, sir, something like that. Well, I don't know. Uh, department store might not go for the idea. Well, we'll clear it with them. Well, it's all right, Willem. Thank you. Uh, how long do you suppose it'll take? How's huh? that? To catch him. Well, your guess is as good as ours, if it works at all. <laughs> it better work. Pressure's building up. You fellas don't know what it's like being under pressure. Owe the bank a lot of money on this project. Figured I'd have at least half a dozen houses sold by now. At least half a dozen. Mm-hmm. Interest to be paid is the principal and the... You know, the bank expects it on time. You can't blame them for that. No, sir. You don't know what it's like having the pressure turned on. We get a little every once in a while. Oh, well, that's different. Your boss rides you and tells you to get on the ball. You don't have to worry. You, he, he can't fire you. Cops are civil servants. Pressure from your boss? Well, that's different. It's not coming from him. Well, where's it coming from? The guy who kills birds. <laughs> We telephoned the Wesley department store and we talked to the manager. He gave us permission to use the house that they decorated. At a neighborhood pet store, we purchased the cage and two canaries. It was 11.30 a.m. when we got back to White Manor Homes. Mr. Simple was putting up a sold sign in front of one of the houses. What you got there? Oh, canaries, huh? Yes, sir. Well, here's the key. In case you want to lock up. Door's open now. Thank you. Want me to spread the word? What's that, sir? That I've sold this place? We'd appreciate that. Okay. I'll see that it gets around. Thank you. Man, some layout, huh? Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah, great. You know anything about taking care of birds? Well, I don't think there's much to it. Just water and sea, huh? Yeah. Hey, Joe. Get a load of that couch. Yeah. Well, it's eight feet long. Put an inch. Just about. If they ever sees this place, I'm dead. What'd you tell her? Oh, that we were on a job. I certainly didn't go into detail. Mm-hmm. Wonder what it would cost. Hmm? To fix a joint up like this, how much it would cost? More than we make. Yeah. Yeah, I probably wouldn't be very comfortable anyway. Not like having your own stuff you're used to. No. Hey, boy, they're really setting up a storm, aren't they? Yeah. They're kind of cute, too. Hey, you know, Joe Faye might like a couple of birds. He could come to me for when the kids are in school. Well, maybe you can have those. Yeah, I never thought of that. If he doesn't get them first. No one came by the house that afternoon or that evening. At 6 p.m., Frank went home. I stayed through the night. Thursday, September 24th, 9.15 a.m., we had our first visitor. Frank waited in the bedroom while I talked to her. She was a young lady who said that she represented the local chamber of commerce. She told me her job was to welcome newcomers to the neighborhood. She gave me some maps and a book of coupons which could be exchanged for free introductory gifts at various stores in the vicinity. During the rest of the day, we had four more callers. Two newspaper agents, a representative from a dry cleaning establishment, and a charity worker. As far as we could tell, they were all genuinely fond of birds. 4.45 p.m., a small old truck pulled up in front. Look, coming up the walk. Pretty close to Ms. Diver's description, isn't it? Yeah. Tell me to get out of here. Yeah, I'm better if he only sees one of us, huh? Right. Okay. Well, 
lady of the house here? Out shopping. Oh, well, I'll come back. Well, what's it about? I'd rather talk to her. Why? I'd like to take over your yard. Hmm? I'm a gardener, mister. Oh. Well, I'm the one to see about that. Uh-uh. Why not? Ask a man for a gardening job. He says he'll do it himself weekends and after work. Don't understand how much work it'll be. Wife knows better and knows her husband, too. She's the one who hires me. Well, maybe I'm different. It's a pretty big yard. Plan on spending my weekends on my back. I don't blame you. Come on inside for a minute. Yeah, sure. How much would you charge for a yard this size? Uh, want me to handle watering, too? No, I guess we can take care of the water. Well, I'll come once a week, then mow the lawn, look after your flowers, do weeding, planting. Well, we're pretty well landscaped now. Well, you'll want some of your own plants. Could use a couple more roses alongside that. That's possible. Mm. What's the matter? No, no. Uh, I was just looking around. Small place you got here. How much for the yard work? Twenty-five a month. That's kind of steep. Big yard, said so yourself. Mm-hmm. You'd only be here a couple hours a week, you know. Oh, 25 is the best I can do. You think it's over. I got to be sure now. How about 20? Sorry, mister. Not worth any more than that. Got plenty of gardeners for 20, you know that. Up to you. Ain't got any other jobs in this neck of the woods. I have to drive all the way out here. How'd you happen to find us then? Uh-huh. I say, how'd you happen to find us then? Well, I heard about this project. I thought more of them would be sold by now. Mm-hmm. Guess you're the only people who moved in, huh? That's right. Yeah, I thought there'd be more. Probably will be before long. Well, if I pick up any other customers in the project, I might come down. Twenty-five for now. Ready, can't swing there. Well, you think it'll drop back there, so. Somebody here most of the time? Most of the time, yeah. I'll drop back. Oh, shut up, will you? What? I wasn't talking to you. Those oh. canaries are yeah, yeah. crazy. What's wrong with them? Well, they're a nuisance. They're always screeching to get on somebody's nerves. I guess you don't like birds. Well, I could do without these. Yeah. Well, why don't you get rid of them? Oh, my wife would blow her stack. Oh, yeah. Pride and joy, you know. She talks to him all the time. Baby talks to him. Yeah, it's just like my old lady. Your wife keep birds too, does she? Uh huh. Oh. Yeah, when I was a kid, cages all over the place. I had 15, 20 birds. Well, I guess I'm lucky we only get these. Yeah, you're lucky. You're lucky. I had a dog once. Yeah. Rusty, that was his name. There's a mutt. Only dog I ever had. Killed one of her canaries. All right. That wasn't his fault. Bird got loose. He didn't know no better. Just playing with it didn't mean to kill it. Sure. He had to get rid of Rusty. My mom did. Sent him away. I don't know what happened to him. That's too bad. Never had another dog after that. He wouldn't let me. Just words. Just lay awake at night listening to him sing. That's what she called it. <laughs> didn't sound like singing to me. Couldn't cover him over. That was cruel to cover him over. That night long, I had to listen to him. Like you said, gets on a fellow's nerves. Yeah. I sneaked downstairs, took them out of their cages. I did it real quiet. Killed them all. All Mom's birds. <laughs> well, I couldn't stay after that. I ran away from home. Wish I could have stayed. Wish I could have seen her face next morning. Made it up for Rusty. Yeah. I still keep hearing them, though. I've got to keep killing them over and over. So many birds. Mm-hmm. Folks put them in a cage, lock them up. Feel sorry for them afterwards. Don't make sense. I don't feel sorry for something just because it's locked up. You might. The story you've just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On November 12th, the hearing was held in Department 98, Superior Court, State of California, in and for the County of Los Angeles. Philip James Borch was examined by six psychiatrists appointed by the court and found to be mentally incompetent. He was committed to the state mental hospital at Mendocino for an indefinite period of time. Dragnet is a presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service. (laughs) 